Good morning, everyone. It is a beautiful start to our day, Damon. And I couldn't nice be happier. Out there. Yes, isn't this wonderful? Oh, it feels great right now. A unified police officer is recovering this morning after being hit by a DUI suspect. Great sound to wake up to this morning. The Utah Jazz won game one against the Clippers. A child is recovering this morning after being rescued from a locked truck in Lehigh. Back here at home, the Salt Lake County District Attorney's Office says they have found no evidence of impersonating a police officer or other related fences in the case against University of Utah Police Chief Rodney Chapman. Imagine a tree stump flying through your windshield while you're driving. I mean, it's scary enough when you have a rock hit you. Well, Utah Highway Patrol shared this photo with us. Look at that. Speaking of problems on roads, reports of road debris on Utah's roads is on the rise up 20%. Well, Zion is obviously so gorgeous, but it's a little toasty right now to be going there. How about Bryce Canyon at night? That sounds a little better for me right now. Anyone who does not follow those health guidelines is in violation of a public health order. Five people shot in total, four people were killed. One person is in the hospital. Grantsville police do tell me that they have a suspect in custody. It's hard to imagine what these family members are going through as they're passing out missing posters with their daughter's faces on it. An employee named Victoria Flores says in this lawsuit that her job here at Built Bar caused her, her immunocompromised daughter and her roommate all to get sick. Things have gotten intense downtown. Um, a police car was turned over. People started jumping on it, smashing it. It was smoking at one point. Many parents that I spoke with today tell me that they're actually happy with online school and may never send their kids back in person. We hike to see the view, but right now on some Utah mountains, the best view comes from inside a Ziploc bag. I've just always been interested in the message in a bottle. A message of love on some of the places Brandon Lingwall loves most. I did it to live vicariously through other people just because it was hiking was pretty much my life. In 1999, Brandon was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis or MS. I've never been able to teach my son to ride a bike or throw a football or catch a ball or kick a ball or run or last year he went on hospice care you know, if you would asked me a year and a half ago i would have thought i'm just gonna wither and die right here and then she came along brenna brooks is brandon's hospice social worker formally but truthfully she's his beacon of hope i never thought i'd go on hospice and it would give me a reason to live. Their friendship has changed both their lives. A lot of people will ask, like, how can you do that job? It's such a, a sad and hard job, but it's people like Brandon that um, remind you how, how lucky it is to be able to witness someone's story. Brandon's story isn't over. These letters are proof of that. I didn't think I would have a huge footprint on this earth after I was diagnosed and then all of a sudden we came up with this idea and it's got huge. Brenna helped make this possible, hiking Brandon's message up the mountain. The opportunity to be Brandon's hands and type, the, type out his words and to be his legs and hike this to a mountain. Um, it was such an honor and such a privilege. The message is simple. Read it, take a picture, and send it to Brandon, telling him how it impacted you. And the messages just keep on coming. Oh yeah, I forget about MS when, when after somebody finds it. And every time my phone dings off a notification, I'm, I'm so excited to get to it. Well, Brandon's view is coming from a photo. It's the most beautiful one he's ever seen because it's spreading the most important thing of all, love. With the time you have left, hug everybody you know every day. There's a story behind every picture. Every picture we look at, she's hugging somebody. She's got her arms around somebody. These are the moments that made up 19-year-old Gwen Donor's life. <laughs> but that laugh, 
is in every picture. The sound of her laugh <laughs> is one her uncle Brian. Her laughter. I mean, it's just. Can't seem to get out of his head. A firework. That's exactly how you describe it, like a firework. It just shoots out in every direction. It's a laugh he'll never get to hear again. We keep replaying the odds over and over again. What, what's the odds of in that moment, you're the one on the interstate at that spot and or the highway or wherever it was, and it's too hard to believe. Gwen was killed by a wrong way driver on I-215 Monday night. That's, that's a mom, that's a dad, it's brothers and sisters hearing that message, grandmas, um, uncles and cousins. It's just, you, you just, uh, Worst moment ever. Gwen's life was just starting. Last week, she rented her first apartment and was in school to be a massage therapist and holistic healer. And that just takes you to your knees knowing that that's where we knew she was starting, not going. So that's what takes you to your knees. Even at the end, her uncle says she was fearless. She never let anyone define her. We're doing her test and realize that the flow of oxygen and blood to, to her, her brain was gone. Their comment was, but man, is her heart still strong. And that's so tr fearless. I mean, brave, willing to take anything head on. Now her heart will beat on in someone else's chest. Even at 19, she was a registered organ donor. People were unseen. She would make sure that someone came over and saw them. Young, young teenager. These photos, the balloons, the words of goodbye and sorrow are the stories of her life as everyone says goodbye. Gwen's family says it brings them peace and comfort knowing that her legacy will live on as she saves many other lives by being an organ donor. Live in Murray, Sydney Glenn, Fox 13 News, Utah.